is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? As soon as Jesus heard the words that were spoken, he said to the ruler of the synagogue, Do not be afraid, only believe. And Jesus, and Jesus permitted no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. Then Jesus came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue, saw a told of those who were weeping and wailing loudly. When Jesus came in, he said to them, Why make this commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they ridiculed him. The King James Version said they laughed him to scorn. But when Jesus had put them all outside, he took the father and the mother of the child, and those who were with him entered where the child was lying. And he took the child by the hand and said to her, To lift him, Kuma, which is translated little daughter, little girl, I say to you, rise. Immediately the girl arose, walked, for she was twelve years of age, and they were overcome with great amazement. But he commanded them strictly that no one should know it, and said that something should be given her to eat. A very powerful story of the Bible, right here in Scripture, the chapter before Jesus performs a miracle. Him and his disciples are in the boat. Winds and waves are crashing against the boat. The Bible says that Jesus was asleep on a pillow. I love the Lord. The Bible is very specific. He was asleep on a pillow. He wakes up, calms the winds and the waves, comes across the sea into the country of Gadara, steps out of the boat, first part of Mark chapter 5, at a half a mile distance, a man possessed of 5,000 demon spirits is suddenly set free for the very first time. All this is culminating. All this is going on. And Jesus is doing miracle after miracle after miracle. Then we come to verse 15 of Mark chapter 5. That blows my mind. And I want to help you out today, church. Mark chapter 5, verse 15. After the demon possessed man was set free. It says in verse 15. Then they came to Jesus. And saw the one who had been demon possessed and had the legion sitting and clothed in his right mind and they were afraid. That scripture verse, they saw the man who was demon possessed. What a wild eyed lunatic, running around naked, cutting himself. Allow the demons to tell him what to do anymore. Set free. And they saw him sitting there, clothed in his right mind, and they were afraid. They were scared. That is a picture of the church in America. That is a picture of this church. And today, it's about to change. I was hoping he'd say, man, but if you don't want to change, that's your business. Amen. Amen. What do I mean by this? What am I saying today? You see, friend, Jesus took the boat ride to Gadara. Man was clothed in his right mind, and it scared everybody. You know, we can go through life, go through church, go through the motions, doing church, doing church, doing church, showing up. Every once in a while, showing up just on a Sunday morning, showing up every now, every so often, and doing our little Christian thing we're supposed to be doing. Can I tell you, people can get so used to what is not right that when God makes things right, it scares everybody. Yeah, man. Yes. Yeah. That's right. I said, people can get so used to what's not right, and when Jesus steps in and makes things right, it scares everybody. Everybody gets afraid. What do you mean, preacher? What are you getting at today? Do you understand? We can get so used to dead, dry church, which is abnormal. When God makes the church normal, it scares everybody. Amen. What do you mean, what's normal? 
Normal is every time we come together, signs and wonders take place. Yeah. Miracles happen. Souls are saved. We are the Holy Ghost. We are together. We That's normal. But when God makes the church normal again, it scares everybody. Now, I'm not preaching today to be your greatest preacher, your favorite preacher. I'm not preaching today so I can be on TV. I'm just letting you know this is a word of the Lord for this church at this hour. And we need to wake up and realize something here, friend. God wants to make the church normal again. Yes. We get so used to dead, dry church. When God steps in and makes it change, it scares everybody. You know why? Because we can't have a hand on it. We can't control it. Oh, don't be quiet on me. When God gets to moving, friend... It ain't, you, you, you can't put your hand on it. You can't even try to stop it. Ask old Uzza. Some people call him Uzza or Uzza. In 2 Samuel 6, the oxen stumbled, and he tried to put his hand on the press of God, and he dropped dead. You try to stop the move of God, I know what God might do. Amen. Jesus, help us today. <laughs> And the sad thing is, when God steps in, Jesus steps in, and makes the church normal again, people want to leave and go to another dead, dry church somewhere else. Yeah. Well, I'm going to leave here because I didn't get my way, and I didn't get what I wanted, and I didn't, I didn't get to be what I wanted to be, and da, 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 I'm going to buy me a perfect church. Let me tell you something, sister, when you get to that church, it won't be perfect no more. Hallelujah. Yes. <laughs> You get so used to it. I don't know about you, my friends, but get me in a moving church, an alive church that's on fire for God, the signs of wonders for and I'm going to say, that's not a church that's going to be a part of, that's going to be a place that's going to be a part of, that's where I want to be. Jesus, help us with that. So, if you just got some time to listen this morning, I believe the Lord got some things He wants to say. Why do I preach this way? Because... There has to be an urgency like never before in the church today. Pastor had no idea what I'm preaching this morning. He had no idea what I told other people to be praying about this weekend. I don't think I even told him. What God put in my spirit for this whole weekend is this is the hour. Yes. Awaken. When he gets up here and says all that while ago, I'm like, man, he's looking at my notes. <laughs> We've got to have an urgency. Yeah. If we don't have an urgency as the church, then what? We've got to have an urgency. Time is short. A pastor, a friend of ours, put this video together. I want you to listen to it. He speaks very clearly about how we need to have an urgency. You're going to hear this word today a lot. <coughs> Get ready, get ready, get ready. Light. Jesus. I thought the Holy Spirit said, He said, I have many ministers, and they are speaking on my behalf. But He said, What's missing? is the urgency of the place. These mega churches are really cognizant not to offend people. And they're really careful when they get up and preach to people. Everybody leaves out there feeling really good. Preachers refuse to preach on the coming of Jesus Christ. Where's the urgency? I have never seen a parable in the place where we are. If you think that all the persecution is going to remain Iraq against the Christians. You better think again. It's already coming into this country right now. If we don't tell people what they need to hear, God's going to hold us accountable and their blood will be on our hands. Whenever we preach, we've got to preach with an urgency in our voice that we need to be right with God if anything should happen to us. There's things right now in motion that may change our nation almost overnight. And for me to stand here and act like everything's all right, I can't do that. The politicians in Washington 
might get through that and lead you to believe that everything's going to be okay. But in the house of God, there's got to arise a siren that says, blast, 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 attention, attention, attention. Things are changing and they're changing quickly. We've got to have preachers in the pulpit that will say, watch out.
My mom always said the preacher must be right when he gets quiet. <laughs> the biggest hindrance to a move of God is issues. Issues in the church, issues in the family, issues at home, issues at work, issues, issues, issues. Everybody's got them and nobody wants to deal with them. I want to pray and hope today that the spiritual head bobbing thing ain't going to be the only thing you're doing today. <laughs> only into your heart. Yes. Amen. Issues. She had an issue of blood for 12 years. Spent all that she had, every penny she had, when every doctor couldn't get anything. No healing, no cure, no nothing. Issue of blood. So, you may say, can you back all this up with some other things too? Yes, I'm glad, I'm glad to help you out today. Cain and Abel had an issue. It was a worship issue. Sounds like the church better. Yes. I said, sounds like the church better. Yes. Yeah. Yep, worship issue in the church. Cain and Abel had it. Abraham and Lot, issue came up about the wealth of the land. Rich young ruler had issues with what Jesus said to him. Go sell all of your possessions. Oh, I, I can't do that. Judas had issues with Jesus. We all know what happened to him. The Sanhedrin, the Sadducees, the Pharisees always judged the light, but never let the light judge them. Issues. Miriam had issues with Moses. The twelve spies went out. Ten came back and had issues with the giants. Aren't you glad Joshua Caleb kept going forward? Demas had issues with Paul. And Ananias and Sapphira had issues over property and they wound up dead. Issues. Church is full of them. What we want to do is we want to pick up the rug and sweep them all under. And so let's just keep going forward. Let's build the kingdom of God on top of our issues. Let's not deal with them. Let's not touch them. Let's just keep going. Let's just keep going. Let's just keep going. <laughs> They'll never go away. The biggest hindrance to the move of God is issues. You saw the video. I'm going to preach with urgency today. We don't have a lot of time left, friend. But if God wants to bring a move of God to the river man, wants to bring a move of God to Madison County, this region, this area, and God help us deal with our issues today. Yes. Yes. Jesus, help us. So, I'm on an assignment today. That's what the Lord told me to do. So, some of you in this room today, you're allowing issues in your life to cause the Spirit of God to abate in you to be removed out of your life because you don't, can't deal with issues. You don't want to deal with them. I know some people in this room today, you're pouting with God. You're hurt with God because He didn't do what you thought He ought to do and He didn't do it through the person you thought He was going to do it through and He didn't do it how you wanted Him to do it. Now, all that, all that makes sense? So you got an issue with Jesus. You got an issue with God because you, you're just upset because he didn't do it like you wanted him to do it. And he didn't do it the way you wanted him to do it. And he says, you know what, I've got something bigger and better. You just trust me. Because you know what, you can't handle that because it won't, you want it to be done the way you want it to be done. Guess what, it don't work that way. Well, my, 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 my. Two things here. The woman with the issue of blood represents the established traditional church. And I see it at first, but help me out. The established traditional church. The young girl, 12 years old, the daughter, represents the rising church. The church is about to rise like never before. As Pastor already said today, we're about to see an awakening like never before. God is arrived. We're going to wake the church up again and us to rise an uprising like never before. So, I believe. One with issue of love which is the established traditional church. Can I help you out real quick? I thank God for my heritage, but not tradition. I 
I know being raised in the church, being raised in the church, all those things, a lot of things come with it. But for so long in the church, we have held up traditions, 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 sometimes bigger than God, over God, above God, and we don't even see it sometimes. I'm thanking God for my heritage. My heritage is Jesus, the cross, the blood of Jesus, and the Holy Ghost, friend. That's my heritage. The most awesome opportunity to go back to my home church and preach revival services where I grew up in all my life and I found out something, Pastor. Some of the things I was taught in church wasn't the gospel. It was tradition. And nobody bumped up against it. Nobody said anything about it because you don't want to upset brother so-and-so or sister so-and-so because you respected them as a man and woman of God, rightly so. But you know what? It had nothing to do with the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is how we always done it. And this is how it's always going to be. No room for the Holy Spirit to do what He wants to do. Jesus, help us These issues will hinder the flow of the Holy Spirit in your church, your area, your life, your family. It will mess up your sleep. It will mess up your health. It will mess up your soul. The greatest threat in the body of Christ right now in the Assembly of God Church, the Baptist Church, the Methodist Church, the non-denominational church, the Presbyterian Church, the Pentecostal Church, the greatest threat is issues. Amen. She represents the woman with issue of blood represents the established traditional church. Did you know that there are things that have gone on for so long in some people's lives it will take Jesus to solve their issues? Yes, that's right. Yes. So let's just go right at it. I know some of y'all probably wonder, man, what's going on here? Hallelujah. <laughs> when I say established traditional church, there are people in this room today there are people all across America and churches today who are living under somebody else's conviction. It never was their conviction. It was somebody else in the church's conviction. And they tried to propagate it upon someone else because that's how it's always been. It's the tradition of the church. You do it this way or you can find another church. This is how we do things here. If you don't like it, it's tradition, tradition. And there are people in this room today, there are people all across America today in churches who can't be free, who can't lift up their hands in the sanctuary and bless the Lord in true freedom because they're living with somebody else's conviction. Like I said earlier, yes, we have to Yes, Sister So-and-So was a great woman of God, prayer warrior, good Sunday school teacher. But guess what? It wasn't that person's conviction. It was Sister So-and-So's conviction. And guess what? You can't put your convictions on somebody else. That's right. And that's how the church has been built for over the years and years and years because we believe that's what we're supposed to do. Can I help you out? He wants to change the established traditional church like never before and call it cause the uprising like never before in Jesus' name. So, what issue are you talking about? Well, I'm glad you're thinking with me. <laughs> now, I'm not trying to be weird. I promise you, I'm not trying to get goofy on you. But let's just be honest. She had an issue of blood for 12 years. Any married couple knows when that happens, you refrain from intimacy. When a woman has an issue of blood, God set, our body, set the female body up for a reason, the way it operates, the way it flows, or you know what I'm saying? And any married couple knows you refrain from intimacy during that moment, during that time. The biggest issue, number one issue, is the issue of intimacy in the church. Nobody wants to get intimate with the Lord anymore. Nobody really wants to fall in love with Jesus anymore. Because you know what I know, when you really fall in love with somebody, they get to know you. Hello? They can know your quirks. They can know everything about you. They can know everything that nobody else knows. Can I tell you, our Lord Jesus Christ wants to know everything about us. Why? So he can heal us, touch us, change us, move in us. We don't want to get too close to God. We don't have 
that standoff and distance relationship. He's asking, as we said the last night, we said this morning again and again, who wants me? Who wants to be close to me? Who wants to fall in love with me? It's an issue of intimacy, and we refrain from him because we got issues all built up, and we don't want to go to him. Let me tell you something, friend. He can help you with every issue you got in life. You just got to get to work with him. What do you mean, preacher? What do you get that boat? It blows my mind now. I have people come up to me quite a bit. And they come up to the altar and say, Would you please pray for our marriage? I have no problem praying for people's marriages. And have done that particular time, it's time to pray. It's not a counseling session. Altar ministry is different than, hey, schedule an appointment, we'll do some counseling. But here's what happens a lot of times. We'll have couples come up, get ready for, get ready to pray for their marriage, and this is what happens. Husband, my husband, this has been said before, will not have any sexual relations with me because it's my weight. My weight has become an issue in our marriage. My, his stepson has caused problems in our marriage. Which is my son, it's his stepson, and it's caused issues in our marriage. Because my son and him do not get along very well because we got issues there and it's causing problems in our marriage bed. It's causing problems with our relationship because we got issues. It happens. I mean, we don't understand it, preacher. We pay our bills together. We go to church together. We sit in the pew together. We shake the pastor's hand together. And we still got issues in there in our marriage. The walls are coming up, and there's no intimacy in the bed. Issues have, over here. And I'm gonna tell you, issues have ruled their love for one another. Has overruled their love for one another. But they got issues, issues. And they say, hey, if we go to church together, we don't understand what's going on. We still got some issues. Look at sense right Bobby. Amen. Yes. Oh my goodness. It makes what God can bring out in this word. Yes. <laughs> I'm not trying to be mean or rude or be upset with anybody. And I'm definitely not trying to be like Dr. Phil this morning or Oprah. Hallelujah. <laughs> they got their own issues. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm telling you, friend. If you're not having intimacy in the marriage bed, you're not going to have the church pew either. <coughs> Jesus, help us today. First, the natural than the supernatural. Yes. Well, what happens a lot of times in Ephesians 5, 25 and, and verse 33, he's not loving her and she's not referencing him. Come on. Jesus, help us today. Issues. If Intimacy goes out of one marriage. It's going to affect the climate of the church, the house, the home, the family, the choir, Sunday school department, you name it, the youth ministry. Hello, friend. It'll affect the way you preach. And if you leave that spirit alone, it'll break on the other side of the church. And you have issues here, issues there, issues everywhere. Maybe when you start having life groups on issues. Maybe y'all show up for those. Hallelujah. Issues. I got them. What do you mean when you're getting at today? Issues. Well, let's go a little bit further. Some issues today will take God to resolve them. Well, let's just take a little bit. Let's just do the letter A under number one. What kind of issues are we talking about? Issues at church. Issues in the ministry. Issues about worship. Issues about ministry in the church. Issues, issues, issues. How things should be done in the church. Issues, issues, issues. We should sing this. We should sing that. I don't need to sing that. Uh, you've heard me say the last two nights, friend. The Bible tells us in Revelation 22, verse 9. The last two words, worship God, period. Amen. Amen. It don't say worship God, but. Yes. It was my favorite song. Worship God, but. It was my favorite hymn. Worship God, but. It was my favorite whatever. It says worship God. We were called to worship God regardless of what we sing and don't sing. Amen. Amen. 
I can't wait till we get to heaven someday. I would love to see somebody like you in the church say, well, be over the corner all stupid and upset, mad. Well, if he would just sing my song, I'd worship him. <laughs> Matter of fact, that's your attitude. You may not be there. It's an issue with church. Issue with this church. Oh, Lord, help us today. Well, Issues, issues, issues. It's not about the mentality of us versus them, old versus young. Oh my goodness. Do you know the enemy has run rampant in the church in America, in this church, the churches around, with that mentality? It's old versus young. Oh, hogwash, friend. It ain't nothing to do with old versus young. But when it's coming issue, we've allowed it. I keep hearing a lot of amens behind me. I don't know why. <laughs> Jesus, help us today. You know, it blows my mind growing up in the church. Growing up in the church. I heard people say it all the time. Well, I don't understand. You know, my, my generation was a little bit different. A little eccentric. A little crazy. And it's coming back around. And the 80s is now the cool thing. And... You know, back in my generation, it was the cool thing to have purple hair, green hair, pink hair. Just people would do that, went through that trend, and it bothered a lot of people in the church. Like, I can't believe these young people will come in here with their hair spiked up here and hair spiked up there, this color, that color. And it blows my mind. The same ones that were saying that, they got blue hair, white hair, and gray hair. Hallelujah. <laughs> and they didn't pay for it. They just grew into it. Hallelujah. You know what I mean? Close my mind. Issues, 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 man. Issues about the church service. I'm going to read something to you. I didn't write it, but I like it. Whew. It's called the smallest piece of the pie. If you diagram the time spent in worship services each week in a typical congregation, Prayer makes up the smallest piece of the pie. Announcements are given more time. Activities are given more time. The receiving of tithes and offerings is given more time. Music is given more time. Preaching is given more time. The smallest slice of the pie is always given to prayer. This is true not only for worship services, but for the activities of the church as a whole. For example, if you call a meeting for almost anything other than prayer, <coughs> you will draw a crowd. A prayer meeting, on the other hand, will attract only a handful of people. You have a church potluck dinner. Oh my goodness. The church is going to be packed next Sunday. The people will have food at the church. And mama's going to get on the phone and call all her kids who haven't been to church in six months. Hey, the church is having a dinner. Y'all need to come. You know why you're laughing? Because it's true. We're going to have a church dinner and it's going to be good. We need to get, and, and the sad thing is, even though they know the church dinner is coming, they'll still come in 30 minutes late and think it's A-OK. -okay. Issues. We're in issues. But they're going to get their dinner. Oh, you have a men's, my goodness, we're going to go, you have a men's prayer meeting? Ah, uh, Pastor, we've got so much going on in our life. I don't know if I can make that prayer meeting. I'll try my best, Pastor. But boy, you tell a man we're going to have a fishing trip? Woo! Man, there'll be two or three guys. Pastor, I'll be there five or five more. I'll be there by the I'll be the first one there. Trying to gather for a prayer meeting. Well, matter of fact, ladies, we're going to go the first week in December. We're going to take a shopping trip down to Prince and hold us. I'm there. <laughs> prayer meeting. I got too much going on. The sad thing is, we're laughing about this, and it's so true. And we wonder why we have no power in the church. Amen. Amen. Issues. Issues that come up. 
Oh, my goodness. How sad this can be. We must refocus our hearts and redirect our energies because Jesus said, My house shall be called a house of prayer. Amen. Matthew 21, 13. We have most certainly forgotten this. Our man-made priorities have misled us. If we're to come into God's house and pursue His desires, we will spend much more time in prayer. We will do warfare, pressing in and punching holes through the brassy heavens. That Satan will have no effect on our lives. He, he will hold no power over our churches. Until then, we serve the effects of His presence. The heavens over our heads become as brass. Oh, God, help us pray like we never prayed before. Jesus. So, what's another issue? Well, let's just go ahead and throw it out there. The issue of me. Me, 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 me. Oh, yes. It's all about me. What's the church going to do for me? Yes. If I'm going to get up and spend a couple of hours on a Sunday morning, what's the church going to do for me? Me, 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 me. Because I've had a long week. I'm tired. And when's somebody going to finally... Start the church when I want them to start. <coughs> do what I want them to do. Me, 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 me. When am I going to get something out of this? Man. It's all about me. And the Lord wants us to understand. God, it's all about you. Whether I get one thing out of it, or whether my, this happens or that happens, I have come to worship you today. God, I don't feel like it. God, I don't feel good. God, I've had a rotten day, but Lord, I am going to go to the house of God and I'm going to lift up my hands and I'm going to praise you. Lord, I don't care what I get out of it, but I don't get out of it. But God, I'm going to give you something. That you really want. It's all about you, Jesus. But in the church, you give an issue of me. How am I going, when am I going to be blessed? When am I going to get a phone call from the pastor? When's the last time somebody called the pastor and checked on him? Yes. Yeah. Hello? When's the last time someone took the pastor out for dinner? Took the pastor out for his, his family for dinner? Well, he's never had me over his house. <laughs> That's what comes to a church. It's all about me. When's the last time someone brought someone went, someone spent some money and bought a nice dress for the pastor's wife? But oh, they don't do nothing for me. Let me help you out real quick. They have to put up with you. Hallelujah. And still follow the call of God that He's placed in their life, and still pray, and still seek the Lord, and still try to do what God's called them to do. But they got people always coming at them, always coming against them, and trying to do everything God's called them to do because it's all about you. Goodness, this is good stuff. Right? Amen. Can he preach something like this on Sunday morning? Yes, I can. Hallelujah. <laughs> so, now that we've talked about a lot of issues and all these things, so everybody's happy and feeling all sore. Praise the Lord. The Bible tells us in that passage of Scripture, a woman touched him. The established traditional church reached out and touched Jesus. And what did Jesus do? He didn't say, stop it. He didn't say, can't do that. He didn't say, it's not the right timing. Now, hey guys, according to Levitical law, she wasn't supposed to be there. She was unclean. The Bible never tells those young people she went to church as a young girl. The Bible never tells us this woman with issue of love has been to Sunday school before. She's never ever heard about Jesus. But something got inside of her and said, if I only make touch him. Aren't you glad that we've got all these issues going on around us? The established traditional church, at least we can say, if I can just touch him. What's the old song say? Reach out and touch him. Reach out and touch him. The Lord is passing by. Are you hearing me? She said, I can only touch him. And he said, whoa! Who touched me? And the Lord Jesus Christ felt power go out of him. He is waiting for the established traditional church to reach out and touch him once again. <laughs> Reach out and touch him, Lord. 
Aren't you glad he heals this woman? Yes. Aren't you glad he heals the established traditional church? Yes. I mean, I'll be the first to tell you. I'm thankful for my heritage. Because I wouldn't be where I'm at today if I didn't have it. But I know there's more than just what I received. You're here today because some of the things we've done in church have worked. But there's some things we've done in church that hasn't worked and we need to let go of them. And after he heals this woman, oh my goodness, he begins his journey to Jairus' house. Peter, James, and John are with him. And I love verse 23. Jair says, I need you to come over because I know that you will heal her. I, I want you to look at it real quick when we get ready to close this morning. Verse 23 of Mark 5. Come and lay your hands on her that she may be healed and she will live. Yes. He didn't doubt. He didn't let issues rise up and get in the way. He said, I just need you to come over, Jesus. Lay your hands on her and I know she will be made well. Yes. I'm telling you, friend, Jesus will meet you at the level of your faith. Yes. And boy, did he have faith that day. I mean, what do you do when people tell you she's dead? The first thing in your mind is probably not have a prayer meeting. Hello? Amen. She's dead. Verse 35, we read it. They say, leave the master alone. The girl is dead. He says, let's keep going. Pay no attention to what they're saying. Verse 39, he says, Why are you crying? She's not dead. How many know? Hear me, friend. How many know? Sometimes it looks like the church is dead. And people have given up on the church. Hello? So they don't trouble the master anymore. I've got news for you, friend. The church is not dead. The church may be in a coma and we may be sleeping, but the church is not dead. I've got news for you, friend. Jesus is coming up the steps right now to raise him up to life. Verse 39, verse 40. I love it. Jesus puts all the naysayers out. <coughs> all you people with no faith, just get out. Right. Well, that would be awesome when we do that church sometimes, huh? <laughs> all you people with no faith, just go home. We don't need you around here with all that doubt and fear. Just get out. I love it. Jesus, just go. And the Bible says, I, I said it in the King James Version because it really, it really means more. The Bible says in the New King James, they ridiculed him. King James says they left him to score. They did that to Jesus. So I'm going to tell you something, friend. When you doubt the power of God, you're laughing him to score. He said, just get out. No. Don't need your lack of faith. So they took their issues to Jesus. And Jesus heals them. Takes the mother and father, and she's healed. For I get ready to wrap all this up today, friend. One of our biggest issues also in the church, I've said a lot of them today. I got time to do all of them again. If you didn't catch the first time, I'm sorry. But a heart issue. Yes. It's a heart issue. Yeah. It's all about the heart. Our problem in America, it's not a Republican issue, a Democrat issue, economic issue, a racial issue. Oh, hold, friend, help me out. It is not a political issue. 
It is a heart issue. Because when the heart gets right, everything changes. Yes. Yes. Everything changes. It's not going to take a new bill being passed, a new law being done, this or that, same president, new president, whatever we think is going to happen, it's going to take a sovereign move of God to move in God's people once again. And say, we have a issue, but it's a hard issue in the church. What are you looking at, that, Richard? Let me help you out real quick. Your faithfulness wouldn't be questioned if your heart was right. I want that sink in for a second. Your faithfulness would not be questioned if your heart was right. I know what it's like. When you're not as faithful as you should be to the church and you know it and you don't need someone to tell you, how many know we don't like someone telling us something we should already know? Amen. Well, as kids, we're the same way. Students are the same way. I know, Mom. Clean the room. I know. I heard you the fourth time. I heard you the fifth time. Nobody likes being told what to do when we know we should do it. The sad thing is we just don't do it. That's called, a, that's called sin of omission. <coughs> I know y'all didn't think that, did you? There's sins of commission, means things we should commit, like lying, cheating, adultery, murder, you know what I mean? Those are sins of, you know, commission, things we should commit, but there's also sins of omission, things we know to do, but we just don't do it. We have the power to do it, but we don't do it. We have the power to obey, but we decide not to obey. Hello? We know we need to be in church faithful, not because it's what I'm supposed to do, because I'm in love with Jesus, and it's a heart issue. I want to be there regardless if anybody else shows up. Amen. Not because pastor is going to call me or text me and say, where were you? Because we all know we don't want to get those kind of phone calls, those kind of texts. <coughs> oh, I've got to answer them again. I've got to dodge them again. Oh, 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 look at, oh I just saw him in Snooks. So I'm going to hide. I mean, I've, had, I've had people avoid us before because they think, you know, we want to say something to them because they've not been around for a while. Like, they great people. That's an issue. It's a hard issue. Your faithfulness would not be questioned if your heart was right. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. People coming to church just for their positions. That's an issue. have a position whatsoever if they would show up or not. People come to church just for their position. If you come to church just for your position of authority, power, or leadership, it's an abomination to God. Amen. You come because you love. You come because you were serving. You come because you were worshiping. You come because, hey, I've had a lot to keep, but I'm going to serve God no matter what. I'm all once home with son. You're going to find yourself someday. Going to church, you may not feel up to par. That's right. You may not feel your best. Son, you may walk in that church in the flesh. But if you'll get in there and you'll worship Jesus, and you'll love on Jesus, you'll walk out the Spirit.
Hello? If we were as half-hearted about faithfulness to God, faithfulness to church, seeing souls saved, hello, friend, we'd all be fired from our jobs. Come on. No boss will put up with that part of us. Hello? Maybe we need to do evaluations in the church every 90 days. Well, they've only been here 10, 11 days out of 90. Check. Jesus, help us. Can I just help you out real quick? Here's the crazy thing. He really don't need us. I said, really don't need us. That's right. But he longs for us. Yes. He moves in spite of us, not because of us. My goodness, he used a donkey in the Bible. He can use anybody. Donkey, hallelujah. He'll wake some of y'all up. He used to reprobate the Bible. God can do anything he wants to do. He's God. Issues. So we come to the last part of this message today. A young girl, 12 years old. 12 represents God's elect. Can I tell you something, friend? The established traditional church is still God's elect. I'm not coming down on anything. I'm not speaking down on anything. Well, a little girl is 12 years, God's elect. This little girl's whole life is 12 years. Hear what I'm about to say. This is where the whole message kind of came. The little girl represents the rising church, the emerging church, uprising church like never before. God is trying to rise up once again, awaken in America. The woman with issue of blood, who represents the established traditional church, was sick and distracted with issues the whole time this little girl was alive. Let that sink in. The woman with issue of blood, who represents the established traditional church, was sick and distracted with issues the whole time this little girl was alive. Which represents the rising church, the, the church God wants to wake up. So here we go. The Bible says the little girl emerged. Jesus came into the room. Mom dad came with him. He says, Let the cool mom rise up. Get up. Rise up. You're not dead. You've been asleep. Get up. Did she not get up? Did she not emerge? Hello? The Lord's woman to come in and say, Hey, you're not dead. You're not dead. I need you to rise up, church. I need you to rise up for the never church. I need you to murder. Rise up. I really wonder. How many people in the kingdom of God have been lost in our churches because the established traditional church has been so taken up with issues of all kinds we've lost the whole generation? Yeah. That should break your heart. I wonder how many people we've lost in the kingdom of God because we have the established traditional church caught with all their issues. And we almost lost a whole generation of them. Because we fight over color of carpet. We bicker and fight over what we should do and not do. A whole generation lost because of church and so called the issues. We can't even see that Jesus says, I still want to come in. I still want to revive the church. I still want to blow the Holy Spirit in that place like never before. I still want to come in and do amazing things. Amen. So, some years ago, there was a segment on CNN News. Paula Zahn was the person doing this 
certain segment of news that day. And this is what was spoken in this certain piece in the CNN primetime news where thousands and thousands, probably millions, watched this and heard this. And the inscription of this newscast was trends in mega churches in America. She had a very prominent, well-known, older theologian on the broadcast. And she had a very young pastor on the broadcast just as well. And she asked this question to both of these gentlemen. And the question was this. Now this is on primetime CNN news in America. Why has the young people young generation turned away from the established traditional church? That was the question. Why? Why did they turn away from it? And both of those men emphatically answered almost the same time because of infighting. Fighting inside the church. People having issues not dealing with them. And it's caused the young generation to say, I won't be a part of it. I won't be a part of that. Because all I see at home is that over and over and over. Why will we go to a church and all they do is fight? Yeah. I see that at home on a daily basis. What are you saying today, preacher? This young generation. They don't care about the name of the door. They don't care about this or that. They are following preachers they trust, that have a message they can relate to and help them live in victory on a daily basis. That's what they want. That's what they desire. People are not going to come and stay. The church to be seen. Look at the churches with a part the audience. That's what people are looking for. They're looking for a church with a part of the audience. When they come in here, they feel the power of God. They know the power of God. And the power of God sets people free. Yes. Yeah. How do I know that? I saw it happen last night. Yes. My brother in the back can tell you the power of God is real. Amen. Don't have to know what he's going through. Don't have to know what he's dealing with. But boy, when I see a young man who cannot have to show up and let all the pride go out of his life and run down this altar and grab a hold of some bread and beat like a baby, you know God is up to something. I'm glad you're here, but we've got to start learning how to feed a generation. 